G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very good to see you. I do hope you're well. A quick news flash from across the web, including Nikon, Sony, and Prograde. And please hang on to the end of the video where I talk about the fact that DxO have tested the Z7 II and it has a magnificent rating in color bit depth and dynamic range. See you at the other end of this one for that. Let's start with Nikon's press release that they are about to launch in the next couple of days a new firmware update for the Z cameras and this includes autofocus advancements. Nikon's firmware announcements. Let's just dive straight into the press release. And we are going to be getting new firmware for the Z5, Z6, Z7, Z62 and the Z72, as well as version 2.10 for the Z50, all coming on April 26th. Firmware version 1.20 for the Z72 and the Z62 will offer increased AF performance, including faster focusing when shooting with AF in low light situations. Further, AF usability when using an external speed light will also increase through improvements to detection performance in scenes where it was difficult to detect faces and eyes, as well as improvements to subject visibility during live view shooting. In addition, tracking frames used for face and eye detection, as well as subject tracking AF have been improved, enabling smoother and more stable shooting. This is what a lot of people have been asking for. It's what a lot of commentators have been talking about. Not only are we going to be getting improvements into even lower light, and not only when your Z62 and Z72 are coupled with a speed light flash, you will get even more AF ability to shoot in the dark, but Nikon have improved the little yellow boxes that denote the face in the eye. And thus, I'm getting from reading here, it's going to make the way they track the object more in keeping with the focus that's actually happening. So you may not know this, but some people have speculated that the Nikons are actually in focus, it's just the little yellow box doesn't keep up with what the focus system is doing. Let's hope now that the little yellow box matches what the camera's actually doing. And further to that, we know that there's actually improved AF, because that's what they're telling us here. And what's the updates for the Z5, Z6, and Z7? Additional firmware updates will also be available on April 26 for the other Z series cameras. These updates include version 3.30 for the Z7 and the Z6, as well as version 2.10 for the Z50, which will add the save focus position option that allows the current focus position to be saved when the camera is turned off and restored when next turned on. The new firmware for the Z6 will also add voice memo recording play function function popular with the D6. The addition of the voice memo recording play function is also planned for the Z6 II in future firmware updates. So this is a minor update for the Z6 and Z7. Why is the voice memo only going to be available for the Z6 and the Z6 II a little bit later on? What about the far more expensive Z7 and Z7 II? This is a bit of a mystery. Does that actually mean that there's something missing? in the Z7 and Z7 II that does not make this possible? That is slightly confusing to me. Hopefully we can find out. Please, if you've got a theory or you know why, let us know in the comments below. Now the second point here is the Z6 and the Z7. This is the second update we've had now for the Z6 II and the Z7 II where there's been incremental improvements in focus and we haven't seen focus improvements in the Z6 and the Z7. We did see them at the end of last year, not that long ago, four or five months ago, but we've seen nothing since. This further fuels my theory that the Z6 and the Z7 have perhaps reached their max in regards to what is capable for the technology within those cameras. I don't know, 
and there still might be more wriggle room in there, but we haven't seen these updates and this is something that people are asking for. Yet, as I've just said, we've had two further incremental updates to focus on the Z62 and the Z72. And I think we would believe that this is going to happen for a while to come, further incremental updates on those two cameras. So unfortunately, we have no focus improvements on the Z6 and the Z7 yet. I believe if we read on, we're going to have a focus improvement in the Z5. Further, firmware version 1.10 for the Z5 will include faster AF detection speed during low light situations. When shooting in the low light AF mode, thereby improving usability, the Z5 will also gain the save focus position option. So as we can see, this is version 1.10 for the Z5. Does this make it the first firmware update? I'm not sure whether there's been a smaller one prior to this, but this is, we're not very far if we're at 1.10. Great to see an improvement coming to the Z5 that will be absolutely warmly appreciated by Z5 owners. Great news and we all look forward to downloading those in the coming days. April 26th is the date. Next, let's talk about ProGrade. Yes, indeed, it is rumored that ProGrade will be the next company besides Sony to be bringing CF Express Type A cards to market. Now this will absolutely be warmly received by Sony owners who have, for example, an A7S III or an A1. Owners of those cameras will be very excited to have another choice beyond Sony. When XQD cards first came out, they were only made by Sony. It made them expensive and hard to come by and they only came in a few formats. Now we have with CF Express Type B, which is the next iteration of XQD, give or take, it's not quite like that, but they are using the same form factor. We now have something in the vicinity of 20 manufacturers and that has brought the price down, the sizes up, and there's competition in the market. I, for example, have got some absolutely wonderful per gear cards. The 512, I've got a 256 coming. I'm extraordinarily happy with them and they are very well priced. Great to see that ProGrade are delivering a third party option in this space. Fantastic for Sony users. And yes, it is rumored that this week we're going to be seeing a 14 millimeter 1.8 lens for the Sony E-mount. Now, I think that's a super exciting lens to have. I've really enjoyed my 20 millimeter 1.8 for the Z-mount lens. And I think a 14 is also a really useful lens. I'd like to see that in the Z lineup. Now, if the rumors are true, this lens is gonna be here. It's gonna to add to the massive range of Sony lenses that are already out there and available, original OEM lenses, along with all the third-party lenses. So there are a lot of choices. I do look forward to seeing what this lens looks like, but I have read murmurs online that it is absolutely an astonishing high-performance lens that's going to be relatively expensive. Of course, once you start to get out that wide, distortion becomes more difficult. So perhaps Sony have gone to great lengths to ensure, as this is a prime lens, to minimize distortion. We will know in the coming days and weeks. DxO, they have tested the Z7 II and it's come up really well. Actually, it's come up as well as the Nikon D850, which was a class leading camera. It's also up there with the A7R3 and just a smidge below the two medium format cameras with the Hasselblad X1D50C coming in with, with the highest rating they've ever done at 102 and the Pentax 645 coming in at 101. And the Z7 II comes in at 100. Also at 100 is the Panasonic Lumix DC S1R, the Nikon D850, and the Sony A7R3. Coming in at 99, we have the Sony A7R4, the Nikon Z7, and the Sony A7R2. And reading through the DxO rating, the Nikon Z2 achieved an overall DxO Max score of 100, which is a slight improvement over the model it replaces, and it puts it in joint first place in our sensor ranking for full frame sensors. Alongside the likes of the Nikon D850 DSLR, the Panasonic Lumix DS-S1R, and the older Sony A7R III mirrorless models. This also positions the Z7 II just behind the two cropped 
medium format models at the top of our database, though the difference of one or two points in terms of overall sensitivity is obviously very small. The Nikon Z2 sensor has excellent, practically class-leading maximum color depth and dynamic range, measured at 26.3 bits and 14.7 EV, respectively. Not quite so strong, but still very good, is its low-light ISO sports measurement of ISO 2841. Although a measured value and not an actual ISO setting, it's a good way of comparing a low-light sensitivity between sensors. The noise levels, color accuracy, and dynamic range have all seen some slight improvements, making the Z7 II the best performing mirrorless model in the Nikon lineup. While continuous improvements in output is always good to see, it doesn't change very much as even the price remains highly competitive. And just like its predecessor, the Nikon Z7 II remains an excellent choice for just about any genre, from landscape to portraits and weddings. So there it is everybody, somehow Nikon managed to squeeze just a tiny bit more out of what we believe is the same sensor, although in the Z7 II video that you can see here, I showed that they had, it appeared, gotten rid of the banding which we thought was related to the focusing on the sensor. So they obviously did some things to the Z7 II sensor. Of course, I suppose, I suppose, some of this can come from post-processing, maybe all of it. Please let me know in the comments below. But it's always exciting to see improvements. And of course, everybody loved what the D850 was able to achieve, the A7R 3 was able to achieve, and the Panasonic. So really, we're in the best place. As they say here, this is now class leading and equal with the very best you can buy today in full frame. And please let me know in the comments below, are you excited about the new Sony 14 mm 1.8 lens? Are you excited about these new firmware updates for the Z cameras? And are you excited about having a third party CF Express Type A manufacturer? Rumored, but I think it's inevitable that these things are going to happen. Fantastic to see you. And look, if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like this video. Don't forget to click on the bell. And of course, there is over 300 episodes that you can watch right now about all things photography related. I talk about business, I talk about philosophy, I talk about time travel, I talk about gear, I talk about the fact that I love fog, among other things. All right, let's talk real soon. Thanks for joining me for the news and I'll catch you on the roundabout. Bye for now. I love this. Could be best shot of the day. Viewers, you can vote.